The Gospel of John records that Yeshua went up to Jerusalem to observe Hanukkah. Hanukkah begins on the 25th of Kislev, two months and two days after the end of the Feast of Tabernacles. Yeshua had just been to Jerusalem at the Feast of Tabernacles, and dur but during this visit, Yeshua declared that he was the living water, which was synonymous with declaring that he was the Messiah. Look at John 7, 37-38. And in the last days of the great feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I'm Dan Cathcart, and this is Shadows of the Messiah. Looking back to the previous Feast of Tabernacles, the temple guard who were appointed to arrest Yeshua at the time, they came back empty-handed declaring that no one had ever spoke the way that he did. We can find that in John 7 verses 45 and 46. And he said that he was the light of the world, as recorded in John 8 verse 12. He declared that he existed before Abraham in John 8:58. Yeshua showed himself the righteous judge in the case of the woman caught in adultery, as recorded in John 8, verses 1 through 12. And he healed a man born blind in John 9, 1 through 12. At the end of the Feast of Tabernacles, after Yeshua had healed the man born blind, the people were divided about who Yeshua was. Some said that he had a demon, and others believed that he was the Messiah. Look at John 10, 19 through 21. Then a division occurred among the Jews because of these words. And many of them said, He has a demon and is insane. Why do you hear him? Others said, These are not the words of one who has been possessed by a demon. A demon is not able to open the eyes of blind ones. So when Yeshua returned to Jerusalem two months later for the Feast of Hanukkah, they, they were still talking about who he was. Look at John 10, 22 through 24. And the feast of dedication took place at Jerusalem, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then the Jews encircled him and said to him, How long do you make us doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. So during Yeshua's time, Hanukkah was celebrated as a rededication and purification of the temple and was a reprise of the Feast of Tabernacles in a way. So at this time in history, the Jewish people were looking for a Messiah who would deliver them like Judah Maccabee did some 200 years before. They are anticipating and looking for the Messiah who would rid them of Roman rule and all of her pagan gods. So in a sense they were asking, are you the one? Are you going to deliver us like Judah Maccabees? And Yeshua answered and said that he did tell them, but they didn't believe him. Look at John 10, verse 25. Jesus answered them and said, I told you and you did not believe. What was it exactly that Yeshua told them? Again, we look back at the Feast of Tabernacles just a few weeks earlier. So like Hanukkah is a reprise of the Feast of Tabernacles, so is it with Yeshua's teaching at this festival. He told them that he was the Good Shepherd spoken of by Isaiah and Ezekiel, and that he would lay down his life for his sheep. Look at John 10, 11 through 18. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for his sheep, but he who is a hireling and not the shepherd who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and I know those that are mine and I am known by those who are mine. Even as the Father knows me, I also know the Father and I lay down my life for my sheep. And I have other sheep who are not of this fold. I must also lead those, and they shall hear my voice. 
and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me because I lay down my life so that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down from myself. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. I have received this commandment from my Father. Again, Yeshua was citing Isaiah and Ezekiel. So first let's look at Isaiah 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those with young. And in Ezekiel 34, verse 12, as a shepherd seeks out his flock in the day that he is among the, his scattered sheep, so I will sh seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So here at Hanukkah, Yeshua told them that they were not his sheep because his sheep would know his voice and they did not know his voice. Look at John 10 verses 25 through 30. Jesus answered them, I told you and you did not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you did not believe, because you are not my sheep. As I said to you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give to them eternal life, and they shall never perish. And not anyone shall pluck them out of my hand. My Father who gave them to me is greater than all and no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Yeshua concludes with the statement that the Father gave the sheep to him and that he and the Father are one. This is prophesied by Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. After Yeshua's statement, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem who questioned him had made up their minds. They concluded that Yeshua was not the Messiah and that he is a false prophet and a false Messiah. Look at John 10, verse 33. The Jews answered him saying, we do not stone you for your good works, but for blasphemy and because you, being a man, make yourself God. Yeshua did not claim that he was the Father, but that he and the Father were one. In Yeshua's prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays that the believers may be one as he and the Father are one. And I have given them the glory which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one, I in them and you in me that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Yeshua lived in submission to the Father. Look at John 7, 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. Yeshua's actions are the actions of a true prophet. He speaks only the words the Father gives him and does the work God gave him to do. In contrast, the priests who are advocating Hellenism and supported Antiochus IV Epiphanes a couple of hundred years earlier, and whose beliefs and practices are still pervasive in the Jewish society of Yeshua's time and especially among the temple uh, leadership, fit this description of the false prophet to a T. Let's look at Deuteronomy 13, one through five. If a prophet rises among you, or a dreamer of dreams, and gives you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder which he foretold to you occurs, saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known, and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God is testing you to know whether or not you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and you shall serve him and hold fast to him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. 
because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of slaves to thrust you out of the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put the evil away from the midst of you. Yeshua's actions and words, on the other hand, fit the description of the true prophet, the one like Moses, that God would raise up for them. Look at Deuteronomy 18, verse 17. And the Lord said to me, they have spoken well that they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brothers, one like you, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I shall command him. And it shall happen, whenever a man will not listen to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet who shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Yeshua answered his detractors by quoting Psalms 82 verse 6. So as we see in John 10, 34 through 36, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said you are gods. If he called those gods with whom the word of God was and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme because I said I am the Son of God? In looking at Psalms 82, 1 through 8, we get a broader context of what Yeshua was actually trying to say here. A Psalm of Asaph. God stands in the congregation of God, in the midst of the gods he judges. How long will you judge unjustly and lift up the faces of the wicked? Defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Save them out of the hand of the wicked. They neither know nor will understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I have said you are gods, and all of you sons of the Most High. But you shall die like men, and fall like the one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall inherit in all nations. Yeshua was telling them that those who act as representatives of God are commonly called gods or sons of God. So how can they say that he blasphemes by calling himself the son of God? This is, or, or in this Psalm, uh, the judges are called gods and sons of the Most High. Yeshua could have picked other passages that refer to judges as gods and those in authority as sons of gods, but he picked this passage because it contrasts those who judge wrongly with the judgment promised by the Messiah. So in another way, he was saying the same thing that Ezekiel did about the good shepherd and the bad shepherds. Isaiah describes the Messiah, the branch of Jesse, will judge righteously. Look at Isaiah 11, 3 through 4. And he is made to breathe in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge according to the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and shall decide the uprightness for the meek of the earth. And he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Yeshua reaches out just one more time to those who are not his sheep, hoping that perhaps they will finally hear his voice and come to him for everlasting life. He tells his questioners to observe and believe the works that he does. Look at John 10, 37 through 38. If I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, Believe the works, so that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. But the works that these Jewish leaders were looking for were those of a conquering king like Judah Maccabeus, the hero of Hanukkah. Judah's actions are described in 1 Maccabees. He extended the fame of his people. 
He put on the breastplate like a giant and girded on his war harness. He engaged in battle after battle, protecting the ranks with his sword. He was like a lion's whelp roaring over his prey. He pursued and tracked down the renegades. He consigned those who troubled his people to the flames. Renegades were abashed for terror of him. All evildoers were utterly confounded and deliverance went forward under his leadership. He brought bitterness to many a king and rejoicing to Jacob by his deeds. His memory is blessed forever and ever. He went through the towns of Judah and utterly destroyed the infidels in them, turning wrath away from Israel. His name resounded to the ends of the earth and he rallied those who were on the point of perishing. So we see that they were not looking for a Messiah who would suffer and die for them. And it was after this that Yeshua left Jerusalem and went down to the Jordan River where many joined him and believed in him there. So as we celebrate Hanukkah this year, we can proclaim our faith in Yeshua. We can light the Hanukkah to celebrate the miracle of new birth, displaying the light for all to see. Just like Yeshua told his questioners to examine the works that he does and see if they are from the Father, we too need to do good works that the Father gives us to do. Look at Matthew 5, verse 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. In this season of Hanukkah, when the earth is approaching the winter solstice and is enveloped in both physical and spiritual darkness, let your light shine before a darkened world. Thank you for watching today. I'm Dan Cathcart and this is Shadows of the Messiah. Happy Hanukkah, Shalom and be blessed.